Hello everyone and welcome back to this section on PyTorch basics. So this is our first section on PyTorch. Now we already understand some fundamental Python libraries and we can continue on to actually learn about the basics of PyTorch. And really what we're focusing on on this section is things like PyTorch tensors. We'll learn about the very basics of what a PyTorch tensor is, how to create tensors, different operations you can perform on a PyTorch tensor, and then we'll finish it off with an exercise, as well as going over the solutions for that exercise. So we're going to begin learning how to use PyTorch as a tensor array library. And we should begin by answering the question, what is an actual tensor? Since this entire section is really focused on that term. And a tensor is often thought of as a generalized matrix. So you can have 1D, 2D, 3D, and ND tensors. Often, uh, students who are beginning to learn about deep learning and they encounter the word tensor, People often say, oh, it's a three-dimensional or higher um, matrix. And that's not actually quite the case. It's more just of a generalized term. So the thing that happens is lower dimensional tensors have specific names that are often used instead of the word like 1D tensor or 2D tensor. So we can think of a single number as a scalar value. And then if we organize a vector or a 1D uh, array, of these scalar values, we have a vector. If we have a 2D array of these scalar values, we have a matrix, and then a 3D array or higher can be known as a tensor. But don't get confused here. You could have technically labeled all of these with the same vocabulary of using a tensor, by just specifying their dimension. Like a vector is a one-dimensional tensor, a matrix is a two-dimensional tensor, here we have a three-dimensional tensor, and you can go into higher dimensions. It's just harder to visualize those as simple shapes. So you can have a four-dimensional, five-dimensional, and so on tensor. So don't get too confused here by the terminology of the word tensor. Really, all we're saying is just some n-dimensional or generalized matrix that can be 1D, 2D, 3D, etc. So why do we actually use these tensor objects? Well, it's often easiest to arrange our data sets as tensors. And by learning about NumPy and Pandas, we've already seen that data could easily be organized as a 2D tensor or matrix, where we have rows as our actual data points, and then the columns are features or a label in our data set. And later on, especially when we deal with image data, we'll see that it's easiest to work with things like 3D tensors, where we can actually store image data as kind of layers of these matrices in a 3D tensor. And then we'll have more complex layers like pooling layers and convolutional layers. And that's where tensors really come into effect. So that's why you have to learn how to use tensors first. But the good news is it's actually quite easy to use tensors with PyTorch. And if you already went through the NumPy section of this course, it should feel super familiar to actually then go through the tensor basics because a lot of the operations are gonna feel almost exactly the same as they did with NumPy. Okay, so let's begin by learning the basics of PyTorch and Tensor Basics. I'll see you at the next lecture.